What's going down, NVIDIA fans? 7 1. Dot one one finally comes to us in the 400 series of what they have the 470 series is finally live and let us go ahead and see what is going to happen and what they're going to update for nvidia fsr just hit the shore for amd and their software and what they can adopt for game developers and incorporation for more pixels i definitely encourage you to check out the special that i did earlier today that i'll have tethered at the very end of the link my name is mac you're the mcgiver 7 channel if you're brand new to the network i definitely recommend hitting that subscription bell it's absolutely free helps me as a creator and if you do and company in it with that notification bell to get more gaming news but let's go ahead and slam in today's patch notes and benchmarks to see what has changed for the 471.11. Straight off the track, we're gonna see what happens for as far as, whoa, a flickering and a Steam VR shuttering fixes. This is pretty cool. For as far as the gaming provides supports for the latest titles and updates for including Doom Eternal and the ray tracing reflection in NVIDIA's DLSS, they are very well trying to say, hey, we've got some cool stuff for our LEGO abilities journey and ray tracing performance for DLSS, for Rust, uh, then F1, and they added like some, you know, NVIDIA reflex integration of the escape from uh, Tarkov. So, I mean, like, that's, like, going to be something, like, for as far as where you can get more out of your use with the DLSS. Uh, they're trying to compete, and at least they're trying to stand with the heat. Now, seeing for as far as the newer features that adds inside a Windows update for as far as there, that's pretty freaking cool. Because there was a gigantuan, huge freaking update for Windows. But the question will be, is it add performance with this 21.h1 with the coupled point of the new update, or does it favor the old one? Um, you have some new uh, screens that are going to be basically hitting the uh, OK com G-Sync compatibility portions. You can see the OC points of the AG27 and the AG25 on top of the ASUS VG28 and the LG32 GN hitting the actual screen now fixes came into a pretty good penny for as far as what they did wow finally got the random flickering taken away for as far as what happened with the sli inside of the gtx 980m and some of the system locks inside of the black screens upon booting into windows and no response for as far as within the force 57.51 the surrounding g14 points when the surround active was portionably in the corresponding disabled surrounds sounds for as far as what you can get for the surround now for as far as crossfire you can see that it definitely gets the experience bump for as far as the freestyle may not work on crossfire after the game is updated but now well hdmi specific hdmi displays might show some flickering inside of the HDR no more. VR also gets the shuttering lag disappearing for as far as the GPU monitor and the running in the background. And Ampere's GPU color in the incorrect if sharpened inside of the filter, utilizing the HDR. Display flickers inside of the loss inside of the games for as far as the adaptive VRR inside of what it was the multi motion configuration. And you can see the display port may not wake up on certain portions with a HDMI on the 2.1. For as far as turning it off and on, that should be something that you don't have to use as a workaround anymore. Open issues still are inside of Batman Arkham Knight for the crashes and the smoke. YouTube inside of the playback. And the DCP latency for as far as colors in the 8-bit and the 10-bit. Now, for as far as what we'll be seeing for our benchmarks, you can see right over here, the high was hidden right over there to the very left top corner. Yes, the old driver with the new window setting that is definitely dominating in 4K. Now, it's not a percentage breaking one, but looking at the points, that's pretty impressive for as far as where the 5700 versus the 5900, 200 points are shy. And the median off and on with the hardware accelerator off and on on the bottom on off on the bottom new on the portion of driver of the 
1.11 on the right and the old driver on the left. So, newer driver falls short in the 4K department, but does it add stability? These are the questions that you should be asking for as far as, well, it did take a step back, but all the shuttering and all the gameplay that I wanted is finally dialed in, and that's not a bad thing. But if you are experiencing some gameplay issues, always roll back, do a DDU, and make sure that when you are toppling off and on the hardware accelerator for your title, that you memorize that, hey, this works really well, or it doesn't, because it could be a future bug that they're ironing out. For DirectX 12, it follows the trend of the new Windows update coupled with the brand new 471.11. You will see a little bit of points take a step back, but nothing super heavy like we saw in 4K, where it seemed to be favoring it. But the hardware accelerator off with the old driver takes the show for as far as where you're going to get more performance if you're squeezing out some FPS. Now when we turn on our tensor cores and tune them to ray tracing, what do we get? Well, we do get an update that's starting to step in the right direction coupled with the Windows update. Now looking at the hardware accelerator off with the newer Windows update, it's literally within points versus when it's on, it can be effective, but with it off, it's definitely more effective with the older driver versus where it's on it tanks a little bit so ray tracing definitely is going to seem to be favorable with the hardware accelerator off with the newer driver so you should be safe with like 4k gaming within that department it seems like with probably the newer 30 series it'd be really cool to hear the feedback of the community to see what the games that they're playing if there's bumps up or bumps down for as far as performance as i expected DirectX 11 would get a lot of tuning for as far as the way you can see how well this update can actually perform. So that's not too shabby. When you're looking at graphics percentage, you're getting a good step in the right direction. From combination to physics to graphics score, hardware accelerator on with 4K under load, <laughs> you're getting some pretty good gains. This is where it takes a step back where you see the older driver with the hardware accelerator on definitely get a lot more attention for as far as efficiency. Now, not as percentage breaking as before in 4K where we saw some pretty interesting steps up. We can see where this one is just going to be a little bit more in the graphics, but nothing across the board that's gonna shine with some more percentage. But if you are having some issues in the 1080p with certain settings, then yeah, you're probably gonna to wanna to slide directly over to the old driver, roll back, and utilize the new Windows update installed on top of there in order to get optimal performance with the hardware accelerator on. 1080p, 1080 contends with that spot of the old driver with the windows update as you can see that this one is where you can actually see not a percentage jump but if you look at the graphics score over it's going to be about 100 points so you are going to see more of it leaning towards there as you go down with the hardware accelerator off yeah it definitely is almost matched but you can see a little bit of a more favorable graphics versus the combination spread throughout the whole situation so you can toggle those off and on to get more optimal. Now, with the newer driver, you're definitely going to want to have your hardware accelerator off. And with it on, you might experience just a little bit of issues, seeming like the performance dropping directly right over there. So end of the day, should you install this driver? Yes, if you're a 4K fan, if you're using ray tracing and they're trying to compend with the portion of DLSS going towards the FSR and some videos that you're going to be seeing pop up in just a few seconds that you should definitely check out and I encourage that. If you're newer to the network, definitely subscribe. It's absolutely free. Helps me out as a creator and if you do today, make sure to slam that notification bell to get all the future gaming tech news that rolls throughout the MacGyver 7 channel. And who knows, maybe Jensen will send me a 3090 that exists like a unicorn in the wild and I can actually test these games on 4K and with better ray tracing of course. That'd be really sweet. But you have to subscribe to find out. Who knows? Maybe he'll send me a, like a sweet little leather jacket that will wrap around the GPU and it'll just be like, you know, like really comforted when it comes in. I would never run it with it because it'd probably melt. Unless it was like in the Arctic, then maybe it would work. Maybe 
Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself as a wild joke of subscription ends. Have a nice day, everyone. Stay safe, stay classy, and I'll see you guys and gals in the near future.